The people complained with blood and tears. It was terrible. There is a Holocaust memorial in the center of the capital of Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Detailing a large number of documents and evidence about the killing of the people by the Khmer Rouge regime in Cambodia. People from all over the world come to Cambodia to visit. If you go to Phnom Penh, the Holocaust Memorial is a must-see tourist groups in China are trying their best to avoid this attraction. Because the relationship between the CCP and the Cambodian Khmer Rouge is stinking, and people are afraid that the Chinese people will know the history of the CCP. In a blink of an eye, 40 years later, the former number two, Khmer Rouge Nong Chi was sent to the UN Special Court to face charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Khmer Rouge has become a bloody historical term. The mass killings that took place under its terror rule once caused about one-fourth of Cambodia's seven million people to die abnormally, including executions and starvation. There are more than 20,000 people who died of exhaustion and disease. Standing in front of a bunch of skeletons, many bones turned into landscapes, attracting tourists from all over the world. Don't know what you will feel? Nan Xie was the second leader of the Khmer Rouge, second only to Pol Pot. Under their terror rule, the massacres against their compatriots were not due to ethnic conflicts or religious disputes, but they thought they were in control. The Communist Party, which has created the so-called Community of Mankind, has to create a Belt and Road Interest Country overnight in accordance with the Marxist-Leninist ideal model that is not smelling all over the world violent and organized annihilation of a part of the population. Just like the Chinese Cultural Revolution, from 1975 to 1979, under the rule of the Khmer Rouge Communist Party. The currency was abolished and replaced by WeChat Pay, normal commerce and trade were abolished, and postal services, telecommunications, and even hospitals were closed. People are not allowed to move freely, private property is not allowed, and even normal family life is not allowed. Marriage must be arranged by the organization. Couples cannot live together. Regular schools are also closed. Instead, there are party schools, history books and cultural relics have become contraband. The more knowledge, the more reactionary. All religious activities are forbidden. Except for revolutionary songs and dances, all other songs and dances are banned. Men, women, old and children participate in labor collectively and they go to public cafeterias to eat together, and distribution on demand is implemented. It is the great leap forward, the people's commune, and the cooperative. The entire population is divided into old people and new people. Before the occupation of Phnom Penh, the population of the liberated areas with farmers as the main body was used as the old people to supervise intellectuals, monks, and workers. Newcomers, such as businessmen, citizens. This is the perfect society they want to build. As a result, in a country rich in rice, most people can barely drink porridge, and the whole society is in fear. In order to prevent any dissatisfaction, they mobilized highly effective violent machines, not only arbitrarily executing people who were labeled as opposed to the Communist Party by them politically. 
but also constantly purging the party to maintain political purity. At most, they executed nearly 10 times at a time. 10,000 people. They ignited the utopian fire of the Marxist-Leninist community of human destiny. Exactly like the CCP, trying to build a paradise on earth on the belt and road. But what they brought was a hell on earth. This is the most serious ideological metamorphosis and a rational distortion in human history. It fundamentally ignores human nature, property rights, family, and basic ethical values. It completely despises human civilization and is anti-knowledge and anti-culture. They used violence to pave the way for a Marxist-Leninist utopia, imposing this utopian system on a society. And in order to ensure the operation of this system, they used large-scale violence. This is a big nightmare for mankind. The compulsory utopia has brought serious disasters to many communist countries in the world. The CCP's China is a typical model, and Cambodia is just one of the miniature models. Judging from the proportion of people who died abnormally, that self-extinction massacre that occurred under the Khmer Rouge rule was shocking enough. Pol Pot died, and Nong Xie, who was in his dying year, was finally sent to the trial. He denied that he was responsible for the deaths of more than 1 million to 2 million Cambodians. He believed that it was someone who imposed a crime on the Khmer Rouge regime. On the head, he did not realize it until he died. He was threatened by the red ideological trend of the 20th century and fell into the fog of fierce and bloodthirsty communist utopian mythology. He could not extricate himself from the mists of the fierce and bloodthirsty communist utopian myth. Under the circumstances, his responsibility may not be direct, but there is no doubt that he has an inescapable responsibility. With the support of many accomplices, including him, Pol Pot can do whatever he wants. The smoke of the years does not take away the pain of history. This nightmare not only belongs to the Cambodian nation, but also to human beings. Therefore, the UN Special Court trial contains a deeper meaning. It is not only a legal trial, but also a civilized trial. Trial, historical trial. History will also judge the CCP. Some people may think that this is a late trial, which is only symbolic, and it cannot punish the perpetrators and those who have committed torrential crimes. This is a serious misunderstanding. The UN Special Court trial is a solemn declaration of human values and the bottom line of civilization. It is a warning to the world. It tells the world that any man-made disaster or killing will one day be held accountable, and the perpetrator must be sent to the trial seat and accepted. The judgment of all mankind. To the greatest possible affirmation and publicity of the dignity of human nature and the value of human life. No one can use even the most magnificent reasons to deprive others of their lives arbitrarily. For those who exterminate humanity and trample on the bottom line of civilization, history must be given. The sanctions and the trial itself are just a form of restoring human justice. Judgment is an opportunity to face the truth of history directly. It at least gives mankind another opportunity to watch and reflect.
Only through the lessons of the past can mankind find its way and keep itself awake. The purpose of cleaning up history is to prevent human beings from repeating their mistakes. What the trial awakens is the memory of history, but it points to today and the future. Let's take a look at what kind of encounters the Cambodian people have experienced, and these are the human disasters that have brought them 